What is the number one thing you feel like people don't understand about financial literacy that you can actually guide them on? What are those things? I think the biggest thing that I learned, I was even reflecting on it today while I was meditating, is that maybe I wasn't so big on the financial literacy as much as I was on teaching people um, the, to become abundant and understand, uh, you know, being abundant and not feeling scarce. Like abundance comes from within, right? And then you express that out- outwardly and that's how it comes back to you. And I think that that was such a big realization today. So I'm so happy that you asked that because it's just not so much about, you know, the money and the investing and the insurance. It's really about, you know, creating that um, abundance within you and then creating a plan outwardly yeah. to match that. Jennifer, welcome to the Earl Hall Show. I'm so excited about having you here today. Um, it's been a long time since we talked. So how have you been doing? <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. I've been doing really well. I just had a baby. Wow. (laughs) Wow. How old? He's almost five months now. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So besides being a a boss entrepreneur, um, I wanted to say the boss, other B word, but I can't say that. It's the family (laughs) family program, right? You Uh, remember that. (laughs) You know, with with all, all that you do, how is it that you got to the point now where you're actually reaching out and you're coaching other women on business development? How did that journey actually begin? Because it was a before, now this is the after. So how you did this know, all start for you? I love that you asked me that question because I was just re- just reflecting on my journey on that. And I was thinking about you. Wow. And how much of an influence you had on me and my journey and my entrepreneurship and mm-hmm. my finance journey with life insurance and how that influenced me to want to do my own coaching and helping other people with their sales and their business because I really struggled. So watching you was really wow. inspiring for me. Well, that's humbling. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. I mean, so when you got into this this space of now – Financial literacy is is basically what I'll call it, and especially helping women do that. How did you pick that industry, and how did you pick that 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 avatar of who it is that you actually want to help? I think I just really saw that gap in the industry. I felt like the finance industry was male dominant, and there wasn't a lot of women in the industry. And a lot of the women that I did work with, they didn't know anything about finances and they pretty much just let their husbands take over. And um, that's something we really advise against, right? In the financial industry, we say, no, everybody needs to have a plan. (laughs) Everybody needs to have some knowledge. We cannot rely on just one person to take over and just do it all, you know? (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Was it that you had your own financial journey as far as you started at one place, maybe not ideal, but you were able to get to another place. What does that story look like for you personally? I did. I definitely grew up in poverty. I am um, I was actually born in Mexico and my family is from Mexico. And um, just seeing, you know, the lack of resources and having a scarce mindset and not knowing much about finances really like drove me to want to learn more about finances and create something different for myself. I didn't want to um, continue on that generational path that was given to me. (laughs) When did you first like understand that? Like, was that in high school? Was that college? How did that begin for you where you saw this disparity of, of knowledge and information for people just like yourself? Yeah, that's a great question. I appreciate you asking that. Um, I think my biggest shift was in college because I went to a pretty prestigious school. I got there on scholarships and everything. I did well in high school. And so when I was there, I felt like I didn't really fit in because a lot of the students there, they came from people, they were not first generation. They came from from families that, you know, had already gone to college, you know, and they had so they it kind of like felt like they had um they had an advantage over me and I felt like yeah. I didn't belong. So I was like I need to I need to push harder and I need to work harder. And I because I want to belong here. <laughs> Absolutely. How are your parents or, or how did they look at this journey 
of yours that they that you were on because you being basically first generation um, in your family that is here. How did they see or comprehend what it was that you actually wanted to ultimately do that you're doing now? It's really interesting because I talk about this a lot in my journey as a female, and maybe this is why I work so heavily with females is mm -hmm. um, they didn't really see my journey going to college as that, as the amazing experience that it actually was because I was a female. I don't think that they saw that journey for me. I think they wanted that for me, but they didn't see you know how much how impactful it was for me being the first woman in sure in my family to do you know anything that was not being a housewife <laughs> wow well what do they think what are they thinking now that you you are doing this thing um this tremendous activity and business that you're building how do, do they understand it do they support it <laughs> you know how do they talk about what it is that you're doing I don't think that they truly understand, but they're very supportive and they know that I'm working very hard and that I'm a dreamer and they just want to see me happy. So yeah, they're, they're just happy for me. <laughs> well, that's good. I mean, because a lot of times if, if we don't have that support, it kind of makes it kind of hard. But being an entrepreneur, sometimes we have to do things without people understanding the vision or or understanding the dream because it is yours it's not anyone else's it's it's your vision and a lot of times people just don't don't understand that um have you yeah, ever had I any, <laughs> yeah i mean have you ever had any pushback from family or friends you know what are you doing this internet thing and coaching what is that all about i mean have you had people kind of you know family friends whatever kind of approach you in that lane and you just kind of have to back off of them a bit <laughs> They kind of do. I know they're definitely wondering why, you know, like my mom will ask things like, why do you take so many like pictures? And I'm like, mom, this is for branding. You wouldn't understand. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. We're definitely going to get into that. Oh my gosh. Branding right. and, and content and everything exactly. else. I mean, you're a lot younger than I am. I just turned 54 back in October, but it Ooh. was a journey that I had, even that started in high school. For me, I graduated high school in 1987. You probably weren't even born wow. yet. Um, <laughs> but it's like just having that interest in, in technology and things of that nature has kind of always propelled me. I'm not one of those old guys that's like, I don't understand the internet. And I don't, I've just always been active in that. <laughs> how, how, I mean, at what age did you become aware that you needed to be able to utilize social media in the way that you're utilizing it now? Yeah, well, that's amazing that you stayed on that path. But I think mm -hmm. for me is, even when I was in college, I majored in communication, I start I studied marketing. But the way that we learn marketing is nothing like the way that marketing mm. is heading in the direction now, right? Yeah. We learn nothing about social media, <laughs> right? Yeah. Instagram was barely a thing. Facebook was barely popping off. Um, you know, like none of those things were really a thing even when I was in college. So I was learning marketing, yeah. but I was learning more about the newspaper, the TV, journalism, mm -hmm. you know, all those things that, like, I didn't even get into any of that. <laughs> well, it's, you know, I've had conversations with my kids. Um, excuse me, our oldest daughter is 31, and I have another daughter that's 23, and I have, yeah, 23, 24. Then we have two kids still in the home. Um, one's about to be 18, and one just turned 16. And so wow. we we talk about social media, and we, we talk about these things, and like our oldest, our daughter that's still in the home, she graduates high school this year, and, you know, she's talking about taking courses, and I'm like, what kind of courses do you want to take? And she's like, well, you know, maybe business development or something in business. I'm like, okay, you're going to take a college course in business from someone that has never ran or started. <laughs> A business. How does this work? You know, so it's it's a lot that I think even the younger generation is still understanding. I think they understand a lot more about social media and stuff like that. Like my daughter blows up on TikTok, so it's like, you know she's got that down. She's a fashionista, right? So oh, nice. um, you know she thinks she's halfway cute, which she is beautiful. But uh, <laughs> but I mean, with where it is that you are right now, how is it? that you've been able to utilize social media in order to draw awareness to what it is that you do for your niche target audience? 
it honestly took a lot of learning even for me because I truly wasn't a social media person. I was the type of person to shy away from social media. I wanted to hide and not have anything to do with social media. But because I have a business, I understand. I, I understood that, no, this is this is a great way to market yourself and reach an audience and um, do it at a like in an organic way and not spend, you know, so much money on things that all the ways of marketing, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I think building that understanding was what helped me want to continue on that path. And also I think COVID was a big oh, time yeah. for me. Oh yeah. Because that's when I started in the financial industry and then everything went to start from home from there. Like I just started, I learned how to do everything in person and then out of nowhere, it's like, no, we can't do anything in person. We have to meet everyone on Zoom. And I right. was like, this is amazing because now I don't have to spend three hours in traffic. Oh. <laughs> and now I don't have to go to people's creepy houses. <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember those days myself, um, especially <laughs> in the financial services industry and life insurance and having to go in. And I'd be like, did they vacuum this month? Um, you know, type of deal yeah. and cat hair and yeah, exactly. Sometimes it looked like there was ten cats in the house, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Many times there probably were, and and many more. Hello, incredible entrepreneurs out there. I'm Earl Hall, the host of the Earl Hall Show, and I have an exciting invitation just for you. Our show is on a mission to share the extraordinary stories of entrepreneurs like you, the visionaries who've overcome adversity, pain, and struggles to make a meaningful impact in the world. It's about the real journey behind your success. Think about it. Your story has the power to inspire, to motivate, and resonate. We're not here to sell. We're here to tell. Tell the tales of challenge and triumph, the hard-fought battles, and the sweetest victories. On The Earl Hall Show, your voice will reach a wider audience, an audience eager to hear your unique insights and experiences. Imagine sharing your story, your wisdom with fellow entrepreneurs and dreamers looking for that spark of inspiration. This is your chance, a chance to connect, to inspire, and to be a part of something bigger. So if you're ready to share your entrepreneurial journey with the world, we're ready to hear it. Apply now to be a guest on The Earl Hall Show. Your story matters, and we can't wait to share it. Let's inspire together. Go to earlhallstudio.com, click on the link that says, be on the podcast, fill in the form, and we will take it from there. With, you know, the whole social media thing, because I noticed, like, I, I looked at well, what social media platforms do you do you focus on? Like, where's your where's your hub for all of your content being put right now? I personally have tried all of them. I have tried LinkedIn. I've tried Facebook. I've tried Instagram, TikTok. And I feel like where my ideal client really sits is in on Instagram just because I see more of the creative side on Instagram where yeah. they really put together, you know, things that are aesthetic and things that they're, you know, doing like recording their lifestyle and things like that. And I, I feel like you could really get to know a person a little bit more versus, you know, like on LinkedIn, it's very professional. It's more just a mm -hmm. bit one sided. It feels like you don't really get to know people for who, for who they really authentically are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have issues with LinkedIn myself. Um, I am <laughs> on LinkedIn, but I hate the notifications, like the fake stuff you get every day. Hey, you've got a great profile. I think we ought to connect. Connect for what? What are we connecting <laughs> for? Exactly. You know, it's like we should book a call. I don't know you. I, I, yeah. You know, how is this going on? And and so, yeah, I've got issues with LinkedIn in particular. No, that was me and nobody wanted to talk to me. So I get that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's funny because, I mean, on any social media platform, right, you, you kind of see what other people are doing and you really don't know what's working or not in many cases. Like we just talked about yeah. something that doesn't work on LinkedIn and all of the social media platforms have their own like way of doing things. I mean, yeah. YouTube doesn't translate to Facebook, right? You know, Instagram doesn't translate uh -huh. to LinkedIn, you know, and yeah. then you throw in Pinterest and some of the other ones there that I don't use um, at all. Yeah. But it's like you have to understand the language of, yeah. of actually what's of actually what's going on. Do you have like a well, let me ask you this question. What is the number one thing you feel like 
people don't understand about financial literacy that you can actually guide them on? What are those things? I think the biggest thing that I learned, I was even reflecting on it today while I was meditating, is that maybe I wasn't so big on the financial literacy as much as I was on teaching people um, the to become abundant and understand, uh, you know, being abundant and not feeling scarce, like abundance comes from within, right? Yeah. And then mm -hmm. you express that out outwardly and that's how it comes back to you. And I think that that's that was such a big realization today. So I'm so happy that you asked that because it's just not so much about, you know, the money and the investing and the mm -hmm. insurance. It's really about, you know, creating that um, abundance within you and then creating a plan outwardly yeah. to match that. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you do, you produce uh different types of content. Like I see a lot of your content and it's, it's along the inspirational side of encouragement and, and trying to get people to step out right of their comfort zone. Or even mm -hmm. if I can boil it down to, you can do this if you want, right? Where does that come from, from you? It's like, how did you get to that point where you stopped or have started thinking, let's just say negatively and look at the positive sides? For me, it's um, just thinking about my story and where I come from. Mm -hmm. I think about myself and I, I come from nothing. Like I come from zero. I grew up in a ranch in Mexico that's like extremely small. There was zero resources, zero education, like mm -hmm. nothing. You know, everything was extremely scarce. and. For me, I really made a lot of things happen for myself and with the support of my family and um, their encouragement, I really stepped out. I put myself through the education. I went to the university. I really pushed myself. So I created a lot for myself and I want others to see that they can do the same for themselves. Like it doesn't matter where you come from. It matters where you're going. That's absolutely true. Every day when you think about the struggle, because being an entrepreneur is a struggle. Um, it is hard. <laughs> it is not easy. I don't care what the interwebs say. This is a hard <laughs> thing to do and to become successful at it. What is the thing that actually pushes you to go beyond the struggle that I know occurs every day? How do you keep it? How do you keep in focus that you can actually do this? I always think about the life that I want for myself. I, I want freedom more than anything. I want mm. to have choices and I want to do whatever I want, whenever I want, without being told what to do. Love I it. don't want somebody telling me, you can only take week, two weeks off to go on vacation. Excuse me? This is my right. life. I decide how long I get to go on vacation for. <laughs> you know? I decide exactly. how much money I get to make. And I decide, you know, who I get to spend my time with. And I decide, you know, what I do for myself. I don't need somebody to tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Because, I mean, like I said, it, it is always seemingly a, a constant struggle. Even though you have a plan, even though you have a strategy, um, working through those tough times can be can be tough. When you think about the type of, of people that you actually want to work with, what does that avatar of that ideal client look like for you? For me, I, I came to the realization that I want to work with other leaders, other visionaries, other people who are change makers and who go against the grain. They don't follow the systems, right? Mm. Like the system told us that we need to get an education. We need to go to college. We need to get a nine to five, we, you know, yeah. and we need to do all those things. And that's just not it, you know? And yeah. so I like to work with other people who have a different vision for the world and they want to talk about it and they want to help others and bring others along with them on the journey so that they can also build that kind of success for themselves. Yeah. With the, with the journey it is that you're, that you're on, 
when would you say, okay, I've made it? What does that look like to you? For me, it's really about stepping out of my comfort zone and allowing myself to take on opportunities, even if it wasn't something that I was necessarily envisioning. Like I recently got the opportunity to start my own TV show and I had never in my life, like thought that that was something that I wanted for myself. Okay, but stop. I realized... tell, tell us about the TV show. Stop. T- tell us about the TV show. <laughs> what is, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> so I recently published a book, right? I mm-hmm. don't know if you saw that, <laughs> but I recently published a book and this publishing team that I worked with, they said, well, you're publishing a book. It would be awesome if you, you know, had your own TV series as well. And I said, what? Like, you really think I could do that? (laughs) And just because they believed in me and they thought that was something that I can do, I said, you know, this is just a great opportunity. It's another great way to get exposure and to put my mission out into the world. And let's do it. (laughs) I mean, absolutely. But it's one of those things, too. Like, when people talk about TV shows, I mean, all of us have access to YouTube, right? All of us can start our own show. You're on the Earl Hall show right now, right? It's like all of us can start whatever it is that we want to start. And and that audience will will actually find us. You know, you know, I don't want to get into algorithms and YouTube and all that kind of stuff. But I think a lot of times, and this is just my own personal opinion, sometimes people look at like network television or or cable television and think, you know, once I get there, I've made it. But you've got, there are so many different examples of people coming from network TV to starting their own podcast on, on YouTube or, or X formerly known as Twitter and things like that. And so I always tell anyone, you literally have all of the tools that you need to start whatever it is that you want to start. I mean, even, I mean, you just wrote a book, you know, you may have had a publisher, but you didn't need one. You could have just published it on your own on Amazon and put it out there (laughs) And promoted it, you know, in an appropriate way. So, like, maybe from an advice standpoint from you, how would you suggest someone that is looking to just start a business, right? What would be some steps that you would say that they should take in order to to put their vision out to the world? I think the first thing I would say is really reflect on what it is that you want and how you want to create an impact. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you can start thinking about the platforms where you could best connect with that audience and start, you know, creating a plan, create some content and think about how you can share your message and don't let, you know, the imposter syndrome get to you Mm. because we all have to start somewhere, you know? <laughs> yeah, that imposter syndrome is is a big one, I think, for all of us. Um, yeah. It's like, who am I to tell anyone anything, right? You know, exactly. but <laughs> we all have to get, get over that. Because one of the earliest lessons I learned um, years ago was, you know, all you have to be is one or two steps ahead in front of your audience. And, you know, they look at you, um, they respect you, and you just have to keep that pace and, and stay ahead. What are some of the maybe most influential tools or that you use on a daily basis that helps you do what you do. I know like chat GPT is like, I'm on it every day, right? Um, Trello, <laughs> I use Trello every day. Like what are the tools that you use to manage what it is that you do? Actually, I'm glad that you mentioned chat GPT because it's become my best friend, my therapist, yeah. my husband, like everything. <laughs> it's become my life. I ask it literally everything. <laughs> yeah. Even as, you know, having a second baby, I'm still like, when is when should he stop eating at night, you know? <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. Yeah, I see the I think we see the playpen right back there. It, I, is he sleeping there or I'm assuming not? He's he probably is, yeah. yeah. He is? This oh, is the only goodness. quiet space in the house. So <laughs> what a, he sleep right now? He's not asleep right now, but this is this is his sleeping place. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. This is awesome. Well, I mean, <laughs> We're going to make sure that we share 
the links to like your social media and particularly Instagram, and then also link to your book, just shoot me a link to your book so I can make to make sure to put it in the, uh, in the show right. notes as well. Cause I want to make sure that, that people, they've already heard who you are and they can hear the passion in your voice and, and what it is that you actually want to do and who it is that you want to do it for. And this is really the whole reason for the Earl Hall show is to spotlight entrepreneurs just like yourself that are out here that are doing the thing that they believe they were were meant to do. So Jennifer, I want to thank you so much for being with me today on the Earl Hall show. And I'm sure we'll have you back again at some point, because I can tell you're going to do big things. So thank you for your time. (laughs) And thank you for being here. No, thank you so much. I'm so happy we got to do this. On this Flashback Friday, I want to bring you back to my special guest.